Hi, I'm Ben Collins, Vice President of Finance at SGK, and I'd like to welcome you to the Financial Update segment of our Around the World with SGK virtual event. Many of you know that SGK is part of Matthews International Corporation, based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here in the United States, which also happens to be my hometown, where I was born and raised. Growing up in Pittsburgh, I was familiar with the Matthews name, but until I joined the company, I really had no idea how diversified it was. Matthews operates three distinct businesses, SGK Brand Solutions, Industrial Technologies, and Memorialization. Not only has SGK weathered the pandemic well, but our diversified portfolio has performed really well. You may have heard our latest quarterly earnings call. As a company, we achieved over $417 million in sales in our second quarter. That's up 11% versus last year and a new quarterly sales record for the company. We also continue to generate strong operating cash flows. In fact, we've been able to pay down our debt by $183 million over the past 12 months. These are very impressive financial metrics in any time period, but to pull them off during a global pandemic really shows the financial strength of our company. This financial strength allows us to continue investing in technologies and talent throughout all areas of our business, so we can better serve our clients by simplifying their marketing and amplifying their brands. It also makes SGK a trusted business partner, someone you can count on today, tomorrow, and into the future. Thanks to all of you for your hard work and dedication in making us who we are, a strong, financially viable company that possesses a can-do attitude. Even in the most challenging of times, Look no further than our technology team, who in less than 15 days was able to turn our more than 6,000 employees worldwide into a highly connected remote workforce by keeping the engine running so we could continue servicing our clients with excellence. I hope you enjoy today's events and find it valuable. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, so excited to be here for the breakfast breakout with Kellogg. Um, this is going to act as a breakfast virtual roundtable. And I'm here with some of my favorite, favorite people, uh, my favorite colleagues, but also friends, to explore some recent successes our client Kellogg has had with trade engagement, specifically a virtual trade event, and also to look forward towards the future of what trade shows, experience, virtual experiences could be. So um, thank you all for joining me. <laughs> and I, I so appreciate uh, the time that we're gonna spend together. And, and I'm, I'm so eager to talk about this exciting topic. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna say thank you to Lisa. Um, Lisa, you've been a trusted client for many, many years. And I, I always say that as an agency, we're only as good as our clients allow us to be and empower us to be. And um, the relationship has been so mutually beneficial for us. Uh, you've become such a, a great uh, team member and, and honestly, a colleague and friend. Um, and I know Kristen seconds that. And I know Chris has been excited to work when he's been able to with you. So again, thank you for being here. And I figured what we could all do is get started and share a little bit about um, who we are, the roles we play in our current professional um, professional day jobs, and uh, and I'll start first in that I am so excited to moderate this morning. Uh, I I feel like I facilitate a lot of things because I'm in an account leadership role for SGK, and I look over a collection of of accounts, and I make sure that our teams are set up for success to thought lead, thought partner, do great work for our clients, win creative awards, move business. So um, with that, Lisa, I'd love to turn it to you to share a little bit about your uh, role and responsibility. I know this is, what, 25, coming up on 25 years with Kellogg. Yes. We were sharing earlier um, a vintage mug that probably was, was from about that time. <laughs> but uh, we'd love to hear about what you what you look in on today and a little bit about your career path to get you there. Yeah, so thanks. I, I really appreciate you having me. I'm really excited about this session. Yes, yeah, so I've been with Kellogg 25 years in a variety of capacities. Um, I started out in finance. I spent uh, a long time in finance. I spent a, a chunk of years in sales. 
and then um, a bigger chunk in a, a various strategy roles within food service. I currently lead our commercial strategy team for K-12. So uh, me and my team are laser focused on that segment, um, everything from um, soup to nuts, right? We create the segment strategy, all the programs um, to sales execution. Um, so yeah, really excited to uh, talk about this topic uh, this morning. Well, thank you. And for those, uh, some of those patching in internationally um, or those who might not have little kiddos like myself, K through 12, it's kindergarten through 12th grade, it's, it's the schools, um, the, the school systems. So Kristen, share with us a little bit about what you look in on and your career path. Sure. Um, thanks for inviting me this morning. I am an account director with SGK. I've been with the organization for about 16 years. Um, I work on initiatives uh, primarily with Kellogg's, but also across a range of other clients from shopper promotion development to brand and innovation launch strategy, um, B2C communication efforts. Prior to SGK, I had a lot of experience in intellectual property and licensing and also catalog marketing. Um, so quite a range going across lots of different industries and channels and, and consumer types. Um, but I love working with K through 12. There are so many fun things to do. The operators and the students always have just a lot of energy and a lot of excitement and a lot of passion for the channel. So it's, it's a great channel to work in. Thank you, Kristen. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. So tell us about what you do for SGK and um, and where you've been over your career. Awesome. Good morning, guys. Um, so uh, my name is Chris Macero. I'm fortunate and humbled to lead the creative and design team for SGK in North America. Um, I've been with the organization for about three years uh, prior um, to joining SGK. I've spent many years um, on the client side, so I've been collaborating with this crew for uh, over a decade. Um, and I've been super fortunate throughout my career. Um, I've spent most of my time in roles critical to consumer experience. So even early on, um, getting involved in brand experience and trade show, which is really the experiential marketing hub, you know, at that time, and as that's evolved into, you know, retail experience and overall commerce and brand experience and engagement across all touch points. Um, it's a really awesome uh, and exciting place for us to be right now as we're able to work with you know, global leaders like Lisa and her team, like Kellogg, to help think about that overall consumer experience and make sure that, um, that regardless of your point of entry, um, we're able to really curate a wonderful, um, a wonderful story and experience uh, for the end user. Um, one thing I will note from the, from the brand side, and a lot of my career experience has been with lifestyle and sportswear brands, which is super interesting to think about how much of that um, has now translated to broader categories. Um, and that thinking is something that, you know, the consumer is almost expecting in a lot of touch points. And I'm sure we'll get into some nuances of that um, as we proceed. But thank you guys. Excited to be here today. Chris, there's a quote that you've said before where you said it's consumer worthy um, experience built for a trade audience. And so I think there's a lot of that lifestyle, immersive, experiential thinking that Kristen and Lisa and the team brought into what we're going to talk about today. So I think that's probably a great place to start. Um, and, and first and foremost, I think what we want to do is, is start to, to look back to, um, to 2020 when you guys were uh, starting to think about some of your most important trade experience is or interaction with your trade audience, Lisa, um, and you were starting to plan. Now, I know what we did is we ended up having to pivot because of COVID-19 and figure out a different way to engage with the trade. And what you did was you created a virtual event. Um, and that was in response to events being paused, one of your most important events of the year being paused, SNA, ANC, School Nutrition Association, Annual National Conference. We love acronyms in the CPG world, don't we? <laughs> uh, and so, Lisa, um, could you first just tell us a little bit about ANC and why it is such an important event for, for Kellogg? Sure. I mean, ANC, it's the one time a year that all K-12 school professionals come together in one place. 
it's there are state shows, but this is the you know only all in person annual show that's done, and it's it occurs in July, which is really important to manufacturers like us because it's right before back to school. So it gives manufacturers an opportunity to one talk to thousands of K through 12 professionals, and many of which we don't have the uh, ability to talk to throughout the year, right? We don't reach a lot of these schools. And we can present all of our solutions, our products, our innovation programs to all these operators right before they go back to school. And they're going to be, obviously they've done some menu planning already, but once they get into the school, they, you know, they're, they're planning for the semester. And so it's a really critical time for manufacturers. And Honestly, for, for the K-12 operators, it's a really critical time as well because at this show, this is where they there's various trainings. They can um, get continued uh, education credits, which um, every K-12 professional needs a certain number per year. And this is their opportunity to, to really collect all of those and really um, get educated and informed. So, you know, for us, um, that this is like... Um, you know, the biggest event for K through 12 for manufacturers. This is kind of what we work up, you know, to every year. So very important. I liked the term you used in terms of moment. This is such an, it's such an important moment. You put a lot of funding and resources behind it. Um, We're fortunate to be able to partner with you on bringing your, that event to life for you um, along with your other partners. And Kristen, like, let's, Let's go back, right? So I remember talking to you as, as things were starting to shut down. Um, you were in the planning stages in March of last year uh, when, when the world somewhat shut down. So is that typical? You're planning in the winter months until now. Let's, what was happening at that time? Where were you at in the planning process? Yeah, we had actually started in February. Um, we'd begun kind of just initial conversations. What do we want this year's show to be? What are the most important points to hit? What do operators really need coming into next year? Um, what do we want it to look like? What does the space look like? What other what other logistical things are needed? Do we want to have a meeting space with operators? Do we want to have a separate event for operators? And, and pulling those types of things together, starting to form the timeline, starting to pull in all the right partners, um, make reservations. So it was really just, just starting to delve into the creative approach a little bit and how we might bring that theme forward with the various partners for the usual, actual, physical, in real life trade show. So we were, you know, we were well into the planning process, hadn't done a lot of actual development and content yet, but certainly getting there very quickly. Lisa, I know, um, I know that, that you were, there was so much up in the air at that time, but what were you thinking? Um, Was it when it, once it became evident that it was 99% or you heard the news that it was canceled, what were you thinking from running and steering your business and what did you say to Kristen? <laughs> Besides crying, no. Um, we were so excited because we felt we really started early this year. Like, oh, we're, we're, we're getting ahead of this. Such a big event. And we're going to be so ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the beginning of April, we're like, there's no way that this event's going to happen. I think the biggest challenge for us was um, SNA didn't cancel the event till May. And so we were just kind of waiting for the official, right? We, as you mentioned, Marty, this is our biggest investment for the K through 12 team. And so at some point in April, we just, we called it. We said, hey, whether they have it or not, it, there's no way we can attend. But, you know, we, we still wanted kind of that, you know, official, you know, it's not going to happen. So I, mean, I think for us, there was a little bit of, wow, we've got, you know, all these school professionals that honestly were doing heroes work, right? Feeding kids and families, communities. And that they just, they came in and just, you know, uh, met the challenge and they were knee deep in that. And, And our thought was, wow, we, how can we connect with operators? I mean, honestly, I wasn't even thinking about the show. I was just thinking about our sales folks every day 
you know, there's no way, you know, K through 12 operators are going to hop on a Zoom call. They've got too much going on. You know, their focus is on feeding kids. So really my thought was, how are we going to keep our sales folks engaged with the operators leading up to back to school? And then, you know, Kristen called me one day and wanted to pitch this idea. Well, why don't we do our own virtual event? And I was like, you are crazy. There is no way that we're going to be able to pivot that fast and pull that off. And Kristen and her calm nature as she is, we could we could do this. And I'm like, all right, if you think we could do this, I'm in. But obviously I went to bed every night panicked. But um, yes, um, I, I it was a great idea because it it just solved all of our problems. Right. Yeah. Let's let's do our own and let's let's see um, what the reaction is from the operators and the engagement. So, yes, um, that's kind of how it went down. So our president likes to say that, you know, how we partner with clients by, by being the most accessible, the easiest to work with, bringing thought leadership that we're supposed to sell you guys sleep. It sounds like you still didn't get as much sleep, but maybe you got a little more than if there was nothing planned. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but I love I love that that uh, picture you painted and and on the notion of planned, Kristen. I think we were reflecting back at, after this was a, a smashing success. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, yeah. That this was planned, Lisa. We did look at the calendar. Kristen went and looked at her uh, exact dates that she had the initial discussion with you and the the kickoff. I think it was under 10 weeks, nine, a little about nine and a half weeks, Kristen, if I remember, start to bring this, this virtual event out to life. And, and I, I've talked to others and said, you know, Kellogg made the call and I think it takes some brave planning to go alone, that you didn't wait to see what the association was going to do. Um, you decided you needed to, to connect with your audience and you guys went. And so uh, sir, we, we all, we commend you for that for sure. Um, the, the event itself, I'd love to hear more about that and how the team pivoted. And again, it was a, a really rich, um, experience for the audience. So Kristen, tell me how, what the pivot was, how you planned, you know, and, and where did this integrated approach land? Uh, maybe you talk about it a little bit first, and then we can actually pull up a demo and you can walk us through some of the bells and whistles and and the uh, integrated experience for the audience. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, we we absolutely could not have pulled this off without having the uh, you know a steady, rational and non-panicked client like Lisa working <laughs> on this with us and and partnering. So we we were all in this together, um, and and we pulled it off, and it went really well. And it is it is because. Lisa is that client, that partner that that we can work with together on. Um, I think it started really, the idea kind of started in March. So not everything had completely shut down yet, but I had had an invitation that came across to me to a different virtual event. It was a global event. So it was, it had been built out in the months previous and it was intended to be virtual because it was global. And they knew that most people would not be able to physically come from around the world to one location. Um, so I attended that virtual event and it was actually really cool. Um, there were a lot of interesting things. It was set up like a trade show. Um, it was themed for that particular event. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I thought about it more, and as we were seeing events start to get canceled and start to get paused or at least start to be rethought, um, and as we watched Kellogg's events start to happen that way, most of Kellogg's trade major events are in the spring and the summer. There's a couple in the fall, but most of them are spring and summer. And they were starting to get paused, canceled, or rethought. Uh, I looked at that event and thought, well, we could do something like this. I mean, I don't know how you do it, but we could do something like this. So we, um, we worked with one of Kellogg's other partners and talked to them and said, how do we do this? I just went to this event. This is what we saw. I had a lot of screen grabs and I have to believe we can do this. How can we work together? So the first thing we really did was put together a kind of a discussion guide and had a meeting with Lisa, with some of the other channel marketers and said, we know events are getting paused. We know these are important. These are some big opportunities where you meet with your accounts, 
with new prospects with your book of business every year. And it's a really lost opportunity. We want to make sure that we don't completely lose this. Here are some ideas. We think we can do some things. There's lots of ways to do it, small or large. Um, but let's think about it. And from that point, you know, Lisa and I had more discussions and, and we moved it ahead. So it really started with another virtual event that was not virtual because of the pause. It was virtual on purpose, so to speak. Chris, I know you talk about day before, day of, day after. Kristen, that was some of the planning that you had, mm -hmm. the approach that you had taken to the planning, correct? Um, in order mm -hmm. to incentivize and bring people, get people excited and create some hype that this this was going to be a moment and an event that happened. Absolutely. We um, we worked out the, the registration for it. How do you register to make sure those people would have access? How do we how do we get these operators to want to register and want to come? And we did develop an incentive for that since this really had not been done before. Um, day of was actually the event itself. How does everything work? Making sure all the content ran, having all of the rehearsals and then day after. Um, the event actually stayed up for, I think it was about four weeks. Yeah, and operators could continue to access that event in that live form. Um, and then we transitioned it to the K-12 website page so that all of, it looks a little bit different than the live event. They were different platforms, but we were able to transfer all the content and it was still all usable and videos and downloads and all of that so that the operators can continue to access it and it could be updated all year until the next event. I love that about about this virtual solution because Lisa, you think about it, when we go to these trade events that Kellogg invests so much money behind, you leave and you have memories. <laughs> you know, exactly. you might have some collateral, you have you have a few samples, um, but but that's it. You don't have something, all this rich content and these useful tools and solutions that that you just already know how to navigate to and, and had experience with. So there's something about that shelf life. Um, exactly. And I mean, it has. I mean, going into our tenants were, how do we give operators that same experience virtually, right? Because we knew that they're going to clamor for some kind of normalcy, mm -hmm. right? So how do, how do sure. we take our booth and we, we, you know, build that whole experience in a virtual world. But as Chris and I talked, I'm like the investment's only worth it if it can live on. It can't be a one and done. Mm -hmm. So how do we make it where this virtual event stays, you know, um, is available to operators until the next virtual event, right? So how does this live on for a whole year? And we can update it um, with new programs, new solutions as they, as, you know, they're developed. But that was a big thing when we looked at the ROI. And I think that was really the kind of bonus, like you said, Marty. You you leave these shows and it's it's over, right? There's no recording. There's there's yep. there's nothing. And I think you know, for us, when you do so many of these shows all the time, it just becomes routine. It's it's just feels like activity. And we really had to think about impact over activity. If you're going to do this virtually, you have to make sure the impact is there. And I think that is what you know, really made this so successful. And we, we just were still excited about it, you know, almost a year later. So. Well, we have the demo to pull up on screen. Um, this is, Chris actually went through and videoed it for us very early on as we were uh, reflecting on on what worked really well and, and what we could learn and apply to future efforts. So Kristen, I don't know if you want to, would, would you walk us through maybe some of some of what we're seeing here? Sure, absolutely. So at the top here, what you're seeing is the actual trade show booth that was spinning. We use that as kind of our, our navigation grounding point. Um, the show walked through itself some live or presented live videos that were continuing education credit opportunities for the operators. Uh, we, we had a... Um, photo booth, a virtual photo booth where you could keep your picture getting taken with Tony. Uh, we had a kind of map functionality to allow you to connect with sales reps or find a sales rep. And then we got into more of the actual content. Um, so we had three main pillars that we organized content under for this particular channel. 
Um, you'll see them there. This is one from Snacking. And with each of these three pillars, breakfast, snacking, and plant-based, we developed a set of content, uh, a mix of videos, of downloadable PDFs, of PowerPoint templates, um, photography, that would help the operators who needed assistance or information in those areas to drill in very quickly to those, those main serving occasions and types of serving opportunities for their students. And then they would be able to um, to bring them up, download them, either look at them then or use them in the future uh, and, and different tools along those lines. So it had all of that content. It did get down into, um, you'll see next, the culinary inspiration and solutions. Um, we interviewed some actual operators, um, had them send in some videos on their best practices, how they really use Kellogg's products and what works for them with students to get a lot of that peer-to-peer -peer conversation going. We also instituted a grants program for K-12 through schools under the Mission Tiger effort. Um, and then a little bit about Kellogg's overall corporate responsibility, the, the importance that Kellogg's puts on nutrition, on feeding students, on living you know, healthier and, and well-being types of lives. So we had quite a bit there, a, a lot of content for people to pursue. You know what, what I loved about the, the hierarchy, and I just think back to kind of where we were in the world at that point, right? And the fact that, you know, the design decision was made to really feature um, a more of a, a traditional booth experience at the top, virtually the comfortability for people to see that, right? Otherwise, you know, because at that time, I mean, think about, you know, you guys were just speaking to, we kind of knew in March that this was going to be disrupted, but it wasn't until May when that call was made because in North America at that time, we were, you know, maybe quarantined for a couple of weeks and then it was three weeks and four weeks. And so for everybody who had always gone to this experience year after year in their career, showing that trade show was a point of comfortability for people, right? Okay, great. I know what to expect. I know why I'm here. I can get myself into that mindset. The other piece I love too is kind of secondarily from a hierarchy perspective, we had this photo booth experience because that's the other piece of IRL is the community, the engagement. Like when you think about, you know, we've all participated in so many of those industry moments. Like that's when I get to see colleagues or partners or collaborators, you know, once a year that I don't get to see very often. You get to you know, have those social moments together. That's a really great opportunity for me to take a funny photo and send it to a colleague. The other thing that I'm thinking about, too, as a parent at that time. I was trying to figure out like how to juggle working from home and taking care of my daughters and all of those things. So what an awesome opportunity when we talked about virtual experiences at this time, even beyond this, um, this Kellogg's experience, we talked about, hey, how do we in engage our families as well and, and invite folks to incorporate their families into these moments? Because it was super important, you know, for the first time ever, you know, our, our uh, for many, our professional and personal lives were kind of forced right together in a moment. So I thought that was that was wonderful. And then I also think about um, the 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 resource piece of this as well. You know, and and you know, you go and you have these immersive moments, and you you learn some things, you get to touch and feel, and then you go then you go back to work, right? And then you go back, you get back on the airplane, or you get back in the car, drive home, and you go back to the office. What I love about the way that the resources were planned within this site is it becomes a, a like a space that I want to continue to check back. I want to continue to check in. I want to see what's new. And then as, as we're walking through that and we've had Kristen and Marty and I have, have riffed on this even a little bit of like, how does this evolve now and how do we create community and how do we create the opportunity for operators, you know, in this case, talking about operators as an audience, how do we give them an opportunity to share ideas? and to create community amongst themselves as well. So I love that this can become more of an evergreen platform as we move forward. I also love that you you guys decided to make it a moment. You had a real date, you created hype, as we mentioned, leading up to it, um, that there were live portions of it. So I know that you preloaded a lot of things, so you have control and you guys could fine tune those, but then you also balance that with engagement ideas throughout, whether it's having fun with Tony, and, you know, that might not have worked for the cycling event, Kristen, that you went to, because it's not necessarily all family and nourishing families the way Kellogg does. But the fact that you had little bits and pieces that um, that had had appeal beyond even just your your professional audience and uh, as well that they could connect with people real time. You know, again, connection. And, and Lisa, you had said that um, you had shared 
you had shared that this is one of the most important times to come together with with your audiences and how were you, you were wondering if they would even join zoom you know just it, they were there was other social priorities like the, the things were up upended and um and they did and so we actually have some stats we're going to pull on the screen here but people did uh did join and kristen i would love to hear as we pull those stats up what did we learn anything else we learned from the design and production of this event that we would apply to future efforts uh, before we talk about these success points uh, well, I would say the first and most obvious thing we learned is we should take more than nine and a half weeks to do this. So <laughs> if we can start earlier, that would be great, which we have done this year. <laughs> um, but beyond that, I think we learned that um, how we draw people into the event and how we have them stay at the event and work through it are, are kind of equally important. So last year, as I said, we had a kind of an incentive to draw people from registration to sign up for the event. Um, and they were registered to to win a reward if they did that. This year, we know people will sign up for the event. They were eager for it. They were hungry for it. It had been canceled. This was a great opportunity to participate and, and meet a lot of their needs. What we want them to do is spend time in the event. So this year, the incentive will be about working your way through the different areas, the different content. Um, and this year's will be a two-day event so that we can explore the content a little further. The time each day will be a little shorter, but there will be different content, different primary content on those two days. So it will encourage the operator to come back. They'll have two days to finish working through the incentive and still be entered to, to win those rewards. So I think um, one of the biggest things is, is realizing where we want to incent that particular operator, this particular target audience to spend their time on the event and recognizing what's important to them to do that. Lisa, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, unless I just, I'm, I'm getting really ingrained in these stats. The stats were, once again, I remember telling Kristen that my goal was to have 100 operators join yep. our show and we had 1,200 <laughs> register. And, yeah. you know, these stats would have been even better. We did have some, you know, technical challenges um, first time going through this with um, the platform that the other partner had used. Um, but, you know, to Kristen's point, I think we learned a lot, right? I mean, I thought we had to have this incentive to get folks to register and join. Clearly, that wasn't needed. I mean, I think operators felt like, um, wow, we can have you know, not have a just a Zoom call because I think there was Zoom fatigue and have kind of this, you know, new normal experience. So um, I think, you know, we have a lot of lessons that we learned um, that we're applying to what we're going to do in the summer, not to give too much away what we're going to do over <laughs> the summer. But the, You know, the, 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 the last two stats here um, are, are very interesting to me. I mean, I think, you know, the overall engagement piece is phenomenal. But um, just looking at the fact that, you know, 54 minutes on average, right, were spent. So obviously, because that's, you know, content is king in this, you know, we can make the experience beautiful and fun. But but really, this is a this is a this is a really important tool for business planning is, you know, to help all these operators, um, you know, deliver and take care of their businesses. So 54 minutes of average watch time for me is spectacular. And I think the bar is set very high for us this year uh, mm -hmm. to continue to 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 drive you know that type of quality engagement content. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the post show views, you know, we talked about it, you know, a few minutes ago. If this were an IRL experience, we would have none of those, right? Maybe some conversations between operators and 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 sales staff. But 756 mm -hmm. um, individuals felt compelled to come back, right, to engage in that content after. Um, I think that's pretty special thinking about the fact that there were no reps in advance of this. There was no muscle memory. This is the first time, right, that all of these this audience was experiencing, um, you know, an event in this way. So I think that's, um, you know, some wonderful momentum for us heading into um, this year's experience. And a couple of things to add. I mean, when you think about doing a live show and an operator coming to your booth, right? I mean, really, how much time are you spending with that operator? My guess is the average is we're lucky if it's a minute, right? right. The majority. Yeah. And those that 50. want to talk to you, it might be five. And I think the other thing 
that you're seeing, Chris, in that the, the post-show stats is we have a lot of operators that, once again, they were still, I mean, they still are, but feeding, you know, kids and, you know, and the community, and they couldn't make our show in the hours that we held it. And so that's the nice thing, too, is that you can reach these operators when they can be engaged. And so they were able to, you know, go on when they could, maybe after they put their kids to bed and and really experience the same, um, have that same experience that those that attended live had with, you know, with few exceptions, maybe like with live chat. So I think that was a really important learning. And I know we'll probably talk about that coming up. But. <laughs> I think that maybe operators were using that as an opportunity to share with other colleagues as well. That's the other thing about an IRL event is, you know, typically, you know, it's not everybody within the company gets to go, right? There are representatives that go and, and you know, for these operators and maybe represent that business. And then they're coming back and maybe sharing some of that information. But now it becomes much more tangible, right? You can actually download and send links and help educate. Um, so there's a level of, of engagement there beyond just the typical attendees that I think is really exciting as well. Yeah. yeah, I think that's an important point also, is that there are lots of operators that do not get to come to this real trade show every yeah. year. Uh, finances are tough in school food service, and, and budget is hard to come by. So they might send one person, they might send two, some may not send any at all, and they certainly can't send the entire staff. But with this, everybody can join. And they can look at it when they want to, and they all have the opportunity to come and learn from it. Yeah, and I think to punctuate um, the success or the attendance that we had, I believe ANC on average has about 4,000 attendees a year. We had over 2,500, you know, join. And and it may be beyond who you would know. It may be a different, some different audiences, some expanded audiences who are in the, who are going to be in the next leadership role and be able to travel to the event. So um, I think that that is important to acknowledge. But blew your expectations away in terms of the numbers. I thought it was 300 you were hoping to get, not even 100, Lisa. <laughs> so I think I might have calculated the exceeds. Uh, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Um, but, but I, I think that that leads us to think about future, right? Let's put our futurist hats on. Chris, I know you, you used the term a, a few minutes ago, IRL in real life. So that's the physical, right? And then we've done this solution, um, last year and you're in the planning stages of creating the event, virtual event for this year while people are still staying distanced. Um, there's a blended term that I've heard you use, Chris, called Digital. Am I saying it digital. right? Digital. Yeah. Digital. Yeah. Digital. <laughs> so help us yeah. understand what you mean by that. Uh, please, please share that with us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know, I'll we'll start with this type of experience, and you know, um, hopefully, you know, in the next several months, we start to open back up here in North America, um, and we get back to some of these, you know, in-person moments. Because I do think, as humans, we we crave that, you know, I still think that'll be an important part of this process. But I do believe that a level of a virtual experience will also be a part of, you know, these types of events going forward. I think there's going to be an expectation of that. I think from a reach perspective, from a resource perspective, we just touched on a lot of the reasons why that's important, you know, to continue to drive. And then you get down to the budget perspective as well, right? Where um, there's going to be companies like we're already hearing it from um from a, a, a reopening plans from a lot of our different, you know, client partners and brand partners um, around, you know, remote working and expectations of being in the office or not, and then reducing travel expenses. And now there's this, we've all been enlightened by what we're doing right now and how often do we really have to be in person? So I think there'll be a lot of selectivity around participation in the physical event. So the, the idea of physical and virtual kind of being one and one. I think we're seeing that from a retail landscape as well when we talk about the the actual transaction with the consumer from the operator to the consumer, just that we're all, you know, whether it's, you know, we used to talk about retail and kind of think physical and then we talk about e-commerce and think digital. You know, all of that is just becoming retail now. So I think that term digital is a is a bridge term that we're going to use for a very short period of time. And so we start to talk about experience, retail, all of these brand all these brand moments. As being as having um, elements that are that are both physical and um, 
and as well as well as accessible, you know, on our devices. Yeah, the pandemic has, we all know um, that it's accelerated so many things. I was listening to a podcast this morning and online grocery shopping has has reached what we thought it would be in five years. So it's sure. been accelerated the growth rate by five years just over those early months. Um, so I think that, Chris, to your point, all these le- levers will just be tools in the toolbox in the future, and we won't be using that bridge term, but I think it's a good one for right now. And I think that yeah. leads me to asking Lisa and Kristen if you've thought about any, does physical play a role at all in an event? How could it, you know, right now in your virtual event? I, I know we've talked about sending an explosion of Kellogg products to someone's doorstep, but have, have you thought about um, if physical plays a role at all? in your in your future efforts um, that are primarily digital right now? I mean, absolutely. I love the term digital. All I think about is let's get digital, but um, <laughs> it is. I mean, if you think about, you know, what are those those experiences and the senses that you really need for in person? So like you said, you, if you want someone to really experience our food, right? And not just, you know, product out of a package that you can ship to them, but you know, we do a lot of culinary demonstrations, right? And really, you know, having that experience to taste the food. Chris, you mentioned, right? We we are humans, right? And if you really want to formulate, you know, know, strong relationships, you you have to have that human interaction. So I think as we think about the future, we're going to think about, hey, if we have an opportunity to be in person, Right. And and because I think it's always going to be an and we're going to do some virtual. What are those, you know, impactful moments that we want to make sure that our customers are experiencing when we're together? Right. And then what can we do virtually that, quite honestly, they can view on their own or stay engaged for a longer period of time? Because it might be education related or they can, you know, peruse resources when you know, on their own timeline. So there's uh, there's definitely a need for both. And we're going to have to think very hard about what we want them to feel and experience in person versus virtual. But yeah, so we're already thinking about that. The culinary demonstration piece, I think, is such a wonderful example of how that could be even more impactful through a, through a virtual experience. And I'm thinking about, Marty and I have talked quite a bit about Airbnb, right? And their shift from you know, their legacy model to, um, to now. And if you think really to the, to the the purpose of Airbnb, it's to, to help, um, to help you achieve experiences, right. To help you, um, you know, get out there in the world and explore. And the way that Airbnb shifted to delivering virtual experiences to your home, I think about that culinary experience and how powerful that could be if we had a physical kit of ingredients that came to your home and you were invited to an event and you're able to log in with, you know, this executive chef and have a community moment that you could share, you know, the, the impact of that as a participant, you know, versus yes, it can definitely be impactful if you're at a trade show, but it's very different when you're just in a crowd and you're an audience versus okay. when you're really immersed in an experience and participating. So uh, that's one that, you know, really excites me as something that can be improved by maybe not being together, right? You can have a, a, a different type of experience. Yeah, and I think the common denominator is that powerful idea. Obviously, the internet brought us all together, right? And I could I could send an email to my pen pal in Australia and I didn't have to pay for postage. But the powerful idea is taking that culinary chef in France and bringing her to my parents' house in Boston, you know, at, with that with that platform. And you guys created this powerful idea with Kellogg too to connect your trade audience um, to content that's important for them to to move their business and, and yours at the same time. Um, so, Chris, is this what you mean by plus one? I hear you, you know, encourage our internal teams and brainstorms and our client partners as you thought partner with them. You say plus one. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think plus, you know, when we talk about plus ones, it's just that that little, um, I'm gonna say surprise and delight, but that that little moment that you don't expect, right? It's that it's that little additional um, um, engagement that that wins hearts and minds, right? It connects with you emotionally. You know, there's a lot of functionality that, you know, we you know when we talk about um, you know our K12 experience from last year. There was a lot of function there, right? We needed to help people continue to run their businesses and and continue to support their staff and community 
but also when we think about trying to break through now in a, in a crowded space, right? So thinking about this year, you know, last year there were only a few brands that were able to stand up virtual experiences. Let's assume that this year, everybody in our competitive set is going to have a virtual experience at some point. How do we differentiate ourselves? And that's where I think those plus ones are really important. And, they, and they, there's a really important uh, factor that we need to consider, which is it's going to mean different things to a lot of different folks in the audiences. For, for some, it's going to mean helping them run their business more efficiently and giving them ideas. For others, it's going to be giving them an escape from a hectic work week, right? And giving them a moment that they can tell their staff or their friends about. For others, it's going to be about, you know, giving them the flexibility to, uh, at least I'm going back to something you mentioned earlier about putting the kids to bed and having dinner with the family and then being able to log back on later. So I think when we talk about those plus ones, it's really important that we talk about, you know, the needs of the, the broader audience, because that's really how we're going to create that emotional brand connection. Kristen, did you have a favorite plus one at the cycling event that you attended or at the Kellogg virtual event that you guys just created? Um, I think one of, well, for the cycling virtual event, I think one of the, the technical things I liked the best was the ability to download or click on, on documents that could be downloaded or tools that could be downloaded. And they went into a specific briefcase. They went to kind of a specific area so you could find them later. You didn't have to download each thing individually and manage them individually. They went to an organized location, um, which was nice. I think overall, what I just liked about it was the cool factor. It was just really interesting and it was technologically cool and the presentations were for the most part live streamed you know with with slides that supported what the speaker was saying and it was just it was just a really cool event and it was from a design standpoint done really well um i think my favorite plus one about the k-12 event was probably being able to get the tony photo booth to work um we know a lot of our operators really prioritize that in the real event that they keep their picture with Tony year after year after year. They have them all on their bulletin board every year. And we didn't want anybody to miss that. So we created awesome. um, this virtual photo booth where they could, you know, we had a, a frame with Tony so you could kind of be standing there with him and take your picture. But we also had uh, an AR process where you could have your picture taken as Tony with like a Tony mask put over and you could you could do it either way and you could do both if you wanted and then download it and text it to yourself or email it to yourself or anybody else and share it out so everybody still got their Tony photo booth and and without giving anything away you could probably tell we'll do that again this year or something similar <laughs> totally share worthy um so Chris, you, met, you mentioned Airbnb anyone else you're envying right now who's forward thinking any brands that are doing it right um you know in, in the event space it was really interesting to just watch you know the the major lifestyle events to see you know, how they were coming to life. I mean, when I think about those events, I think about South by Southwest and Coachella and these, these moments that everybody pays attention to. Um, and there were, there were some, there were definitely some wins and some challenges, you know, that you were able to see and feel. I think this year it's going to be really exciting because what I love about those events becoming virtual is the accessibility. I love that, you know, folks who maybe didn't have, um, whether, you know, whatever the barriers were, weren't able to get, you know, to those moments, to those events. And, and you can imagine if you're um, opening a small boutique, you know, business or trying to, you know, live, live your own personal dreams, maybe you don't have the ability, right, the funds, the time, whatever to go and experience that. So I'm really excited about that, because there are moments that I think from a lifestyle perspective, um, we're all the, you know, all industries are paying attention to. Um, from a functional perspective, um, retail has been really interesting to pay attention to. Um, there were a, a couple of virtual experiences um, that I was just admiring and sharing in a meeting yesterday. I mean, Ralph Lauren has done a really beautiful job of standing up some physical retail where you can actually walk in and, and have an immersive experience within an area that is, you know, the, the parts of, of retail that are hard to translate to the web is the visual merchandising, the propping, the styling, the approachability and storytelling of product. And so that's something that, you know, the the RL team has done a wonderful job of standing up in a virtual environment. We can even maybe include some of those links. Um, and another um, that I was just checking out yesterday was uh, another uh, from Calvin Klein around a, um, a capsule that they've just released. And very similarly, being able to 
walk into an environment, have the comfortability of looking at a space that has walls, but being able to walk up and engage and storytell and then continue to PDP and also transact. So I think all of that for me is, um, it's been really exciting to kind of see how, um, you know, with our back against the wall as, as an industry, we've pivoted. Um, it's definitely forced some innovation. And I think, Marty, you mentioned some statistics earlier about, you know, the, the shifting to, um, to, to, you know, in e-commerce and to, um, to digital solutions. I think we're going to see that, you know, 10x over the next couple of years. And, and, and I think it's on, us, it's on us to be ready for it. Uh, but I think that's, um, I think we're just getting started. Lisa, do you expect big changes in your industry based on uh, behavioral changes and leveraging technology and connecting virtually? Absolutely. I think, you know, Chris said a big word, which is budget. I mean, the unfortunate part of, um, you know, a result of COVID is tight budget. So there's going to be, you know, schools aren't going to be able to afford to send their staff to shows and just really in any kind of work travel. And then you've got to think about, hey, am I going to spend this much money and take this much time out of my day to maybe attend a, a two-hour uh, meeting or conference or a four-hour experience? So I do think that, it, it, you know, virtual is going to be here to stay. Um, but I, once again, I think there's going to be a combination, right? I think um, there are going to be physical shows, um, but, you know, I think the experience will change. And I think um, what we need to think about is, um, you know, Chris, you use the word functional a lot, you know, functional. And I think, you know, last year, the show that we did, the intent, the focus was really on functional. And I think what we see in our yeah. industry is this continued focus. Those that are now doing their own virtual, it's all about function, right? And, you know, SNA is going to have a virtual ANC this year. We're going to participate in their show. It's about function. I think that's where you're going to see our plus one, right? We're going to step it up. And it's not going to be about function. It's going to be, how do we help operators think outside the box, right? They're being inundated with function, right? Every day. And it's been a year of, you know, unpredictability and, and having to figure out how to feed kids, whether they're in the classroom, whether they're at home. Um, and now what we want to do is really kind of give them more of the inspiration and how can they think out of it? Because they're going to want to get back to innovation, creativity. So we're stepping it up. Uh, this year. Marty you mentioned a couple of minutes ago the the day parts, right? And the importance of kind of you know planning this experience, you know, from the perspective of building that hype to backfilling sort of the the, the do business functional parts of, of you know we're talking about a B2B trade show experience here is very important to a lot of um, of operators. And then the after, you know, the day after engagement, optimization, et cetera. That's the one piece I'm really excited to, you know, to see how the industry matures from that perspective and how we one in the days prior, build hype, build invitation, build engagement, and the day of. Kristen, you mentioned you know some of the the live events and just how important they are. I think there's a level of of creating those can't miss out on kind of FOMO moments, right? That you have to be a part of. That's from a competitive space, like that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna win the audience, right? That that we need by having those moments that they're really excited that maybe there is some exclusivity there, or maybe there's um, you know, special participation availability, right, to certain folks, or we grant, you know, the ability for operators to invite their staff to those special moments. And then the day after piece, like, I feel like that's just such an awesome opportunity for us to continue to connect with our audience. And then even to open that up and take some of the onus off of brands to be just the only ones delivering that content, but also to stand up social platforms. Like, mm -hmm. that's a part of this experience okay. that I would love yeah. to see us evolve is giving operators you know, the audience in general, opportunities to share ideas with one another, to share how, you know, they're helping to impact their business, you know, and, and just like, you know, most of the world as we know it, we're not going to go back to the way things always were, just like we're not going to go back to, to maybe eating breakfast the way we always have, right? And so how do we help operators solve those problems? And, you know, because a, a lot of folks who are in a habit of, stopping and buying um, specialty coffee every day and calling that breakfast maybe aren't doing that any longer and now we're on the run or you know we're you know just lifestyle is changing so it's not going back to, to backfilling our business and menus the way they always were it's giving you know giving us all solutions and opportunities to continue to evolve in real time 
Yeah, it, we are all empowered to rewrite the script in our home lives and as marketers coming together to, to do this. So I think it's incredibly exciting. Um, Chris, do you have any bets on kind of what's next in the industry that you're willing to place? Anything we should expect to see more than what you shared today already? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, I think we've seen the, it's, it's really interesting, right? The, the, the rebirth of the QR code, I think is really interesting. And, and, um, and as that evolves as well to, um, I think about Kellogg specifically and just, you know, uh, consumer packaged goods in general, you know, I think there's, for me as a consumer, I have an expectation that almost anything that I put on my table or in my cabinet, I can have a conversation with somehow, right? I want to learn. I want to leverage how to use these ingredients. I want to learn um, from a nutrition perspective. You could imagine that from a B2B perspective as well, right? In education. Um, so I think I think that's important. Um, and then also just the, the, the uh, I'm going to say that complements of physical versus digital as we plan these experiences moving forward. You know, last year I talked about you know, the, I think I think it was a really important design decision and a smart one to leverage, you know, something comfortable from a from a trade show experience. So you kind of knew, right, what you you know, you kind of put yourself in that mindset and were able to connect with that. I think going forward, we may not need to do that, right? Our 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 digital experience can be something out of this world. It can be more augmented. You know, we can start to talk about things like 4D experiences because I can send you a physical kit and you can have immersion and you can have, you know, conversation. Um, that's that's kind of where I see um, the evolution starting to go. Kristen, I know you're starting to see that with some of our clients where even any own marketer asset, whether it's the package, whether it's some of your physical collateral, Lisa, you know, it's a gateway to connect in a deeper way with the consumer beyond what's written on that. And I know, Kristen, you're talking with our some clients right now about how to use a sticker on top of their package with a QR code. Um, do you have any bets that you want to place on what, what we're going to see next, Kristen? Anything top of mind? I guess what I'm hoping we're going to see is an evolution um, and, and elevation of really understanding the audience. I think it it up until last year and through much of last year, it was fairly simple to say, well, I'll set up a website. I'll have a Zoom call. I'll have a meeting this way using this type of technology. But I think we're past that. If, if that's what you're still doing, you're probably not connecting with your audience. You don't understand enough about what they need, what time they have, what they're willing to dedicate to your particular effort that, that you are that you are fronting and standing up. So I think it's going to be really critical to have an even deeper understanding of your audience and get them what they need and what is engaging to them to make them want to attend these because there will be so many of them. You can't attend everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are pioneering, but other, others will follow. And I'm sure you're starting to see that now. So, so Lisa, I think that's a great way to kind of wrap up. Um, are you able to share anything exciting um, about what's, what's on the forefront with Kellogg? Could you, could you enlighten us there? Well, I will tell you that, yes, we are planning our, our part two. Um, we're doing another virtual show. Like I said, we're, we're kind of breaking out of Chris, like you said, last year was really important for them to experience, hey, they see the booth, they feel like they're there. You know, that was yesterday, right? Now we're focusing beyond that and really kind of tap into um, more, like I said, out-of-the-box thinking, creativity. I mean, I think, you know, to build on what Kristen said about, you know, we really need to make sure we know what the operator needs. I think it's really important to understand, too, the when and the how. Right. How and and the when. So we're we're you know thinking about that as well. But I'm not gonna give too much away, but I will say that um we definitely will um we're we're bringing it up a notch. And so if we've got you know other competitors that that follow, um we're still gonna be we're still gonna be in the lead. I'm very competitive. So <laughs> I love and it. We got the right team here working with us to make sure that we keep that keep that edge. But yeah. Well, we're so excited to, to, to continue that competitive advantage and to continue to iterate and evolve. And, um, and we thank you so much for the opportunities to do that, for us to be able to share these awesome success stories. I think there's a lot that us as marketers um, and uh, that we can think about as we, as we engage on every program 
an initiative moving forward. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, Kristen and Chris and your creative and the account teams, uh, I thank them as well for all the hard work to make this come together. And I can't wait to see what happens over the summer with round two of the virtual show or the virtual event. And, um, and again, I just really enjoy talking this stuff with you. Uh, I think we all learned some new acronyms from Chris and it's, it's been <laughs> great to, to have a round table breakfast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, I look forward to, to what's next. Thank you. Thank, thank you. At Matthews International. What makes us different? Que no hace diferente. To, co nas wyróżnia. Is what makes us great. Inspired, Inspired together, together, we see diversity and inclusion. Çeşitliliği ve kapsayıcılığı. Vielfalt und Inklusion. As a priority to be considered. In every aspect of our business. Diverse in culture, talent, and geography. We, we are, are united. Wunschen wir schon? Aber vereint. By our drive to create together. Strive together. And grow together. We are committed to building a culture where employees of all backgrounds and genders, identities, and experiences have a voice. Have a sense of belonging. Un senso di appartenza. And are encouraged to succeed. If we build on this mission, we will have a culture where all people have a voice. Una voce. Una voz. Are celebrated and are encouraged to pursue their highest aspirations. Join us. Bize katıl. Join us. Przyłącz się do nas. And let's be inspired together. together.